Hi, I'm here today to tell you about the IntelliFlash 310 flash chromatography workstation from Varian Inc. The IntelliFlash 310 is a compact, all-in-one flash chromatography workstation. It's a modular system. It consists of a touchscreen computer, which is integrated into the main system, with a panel of buttons on the front here that allow you quick and easy access to commonly used functions. You may also use a keyboard with a, an attached touch, touchpad mouse here for some real precise navigation through the system. Moving on through the system, there's an integrated ultraviolet absorbance detector that's either available in single wavelength or multiple variable wavelengths running from 200 to 400 nanometers. You can detect on up to eight wavelengths at one time. The integrated fraction collector has a pull-out drawer and it pulls full, sorry, full the way out and it holds four different racks. The racks include an RFID tag on the bottom of the rack which tells the system which rack it is and what the status of that rack might be. Of course when you open the drawer the pump mechanism stops and no liquid will be spilled onto the back end of the fraction collector. There's a pump at the bottom, which is a binary gradient pump. Now it's binary gradient, but it pulls from up to four different solvent channels. You can choose two of four at any time, and folks who choose the advanced software package will automatically have switching from an empty solvent bottle of, for instance, hexane to the next full bottle to further make it easy to move from run to run. Finally, there's a column station the column station is a feature unique to Analogix. It's not directly connected to the IntelliFlash system, but instead can be relocated with tubing and some wiring. The column station holds the SuperFlash flash chromatography columns of many, many sizes. The column station is quick and easy to attach the column. It also So it runs the, uh, the solvent through the column. It also provides a place right here for sample injection systems. And finally, it has a very convenient local display right next to the column. So you're able to start and stop and adjust different parameters or view what's going on with the separation right at the column. This is very handy for people who want to remotely mount the column station from the main IntelliFlash. Now we'll look at some details on the software of the IntelliFlash 310. The software is one of the main strengths of the IntelliFlash system. The software is navigated with an easy touch pen stylus on the touch screen. As I had said earlier, you can also use the keyboard and the little touch finger sensitive mouse similar to what you would have in a laptop. The IntelliFlash screen is broken down into four simple screen areas. You start from the top left and you move down to the bottom right generally. So from the top left we have current runs, which would list a queue of any runs that you have waiting to run. You have historical runs here which are any runs that have already been completed. On the top right over here you have the main window pane which generally is going to be showing the chromatogram of a current or just finished run. And the bottom main window pane which is going to show the detail for whatever you've selected on the left side on these uh, top and bottom trees. So to make a, a new run we press new. Immediately a new run pops in here it's asking us which column type we want to use. We can drop down and choose a column type. We then go over to the column station, we load the proper column, and we press OK. Once we've done that, this screen is complete. We go to gradient, and here we can define the gradient by dragging the points on the screen or adding new points. In this case, I'm going to get a little bit fancy and show that we can collect all for a section of area here or we can collect none at the beginning of the run. This would be very handy if, for example, the compound is not UV active. You can make sure you collect everything here. Or, at the beginning, you're, you're sure that you're not going to have good compound coming out for some time. You're not going to waste a bunch of time and uh, filling tubes and handling tubes. We move on to the detection tab, where currently we have the wavelength set to 254 nanometers. We have a little information button here telling us that something is maybe not as nice as it should be. In fact, 
uh, UV cutoff of one of the solvents is 256 nanometers, and we're looking at 254. So 254 nanometers is going to show up a little bit with our ethyl acetate. We're going to ignore that because we know it's okay. I can add up to eight wavelengths here, and I can collect or detect on both of them. I can make decisions to collect the, the peaks that come from any of those, or I can simply monitor them by turning off the collect checkbox for any one of those wavelengths. Moving on, the last tab to set up a run is the fraction tab. In this case, we're going to set the fraction to first available, and we're going to let that RFID tag on the bottom of the rack tell us which rack we're going to use. Yet one fewer thing that you would have to set from run to run. In any case, the run is now ready to go. We can tell because there's a green light above the go button. When we press the go button, it's going to give us a nice summary. At any time, if we decide that this wasn't what we expected, for example, if the column is a SF25-120 gram, we can press the column button right here and go back to the main screen and change the column. Or we can go to the collection and change that, or we can go to any other parameter on the system and make a change to it. When we're ready again, we can say continue. It's going to equilibrate the column now. The fraction collector gets in position and ready to go. It says it has 9 minutes and 26 seconds left to equilibrate. We're going to skip that due to the magic of television. All right, now we've got inject sample. So we're going to manually inject the sample on the top of the column by injecting the sample into the lure fitting and press resume. And now we have the chromatogram up on the top. Not sure if you'll be able to hear, but the UV detector is running. It's a pulsed UV detector. Notice there was no warm-up time required for the UV detector to start. That's very handy because the UV detector lamp does not require warm-up or cool-down time, and it's only on when the system is using the UV absorbance detector. That will save a lot of effort and headaches and expense for lamp replacements. Now, we're going to fast forward and assume that the run is finished, completed successfully. We're going to do that by pausing the run with this quick, easy keypad. We're going to get a pause uh, note at the top, and it says run paused, press run button to continue or abort to terminate. We're going to press abort. Are you sure you want to abort the run? If you're irritated with these kind of dialog boxes, we put a convenient little option that you can say do not display this message again. We're going to leave that on for now. One of the last things I'm going to show you is that we now ask you did your compound elute fully so you can let the system stay in a suspended mode, do some TLC or some LCMS or whatever you want to do to check for your compound and you can come back and if you want you can extend the run or you can go right ahead and finalize the, the run. Now, when the run is finalized, the run is going to have dropped from up here in the current runs down here to the historical runs. So if there's any question as to what happened on your last run, you simply come up here to this section, pick that run, you can go through and see all the conditions that you used to set up that run. Let's see if we have a little bit more exciting one here in the past. There's one that's not a very pretty run, but it's different. Um, final note. If you like this run and you wanted to rerun it, you can drag the old run up, drop it on the new button, and there you have the new run with the same conditions as your prior to run. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion on the IntelliFlash 310 system. We hope you find it interesting, and we look forward to serving you in the future.